Assalamu alaikum and greetings to my fellow evaluators, coordinators, supervisors, and also my fellow colleagues. My name is Puchi Noor Amirah binti Abu Sufyan, a student of Bachelor of Applied Science, Product Development Technology with Honours, magic number F18B0205. I was supervised by Dr. Ikarastika Rahayu binti Abdul Wahab for my final year project which is entitled Nutritional and Physical Chemical Analysis of Gummies Incorporated with Edible Bird's Nest which is EBN. So here is the overview which we will go from research background all the way to conclusion. Edible Bird's Nest EBN is also known as Caviar of the East as it is one of the most expensive animal products. EBN is also known for its high glycoprotein content and packed with nutritional value that some of the benefits that EBN can offer are healthier pregnancies for women, boosting the immune system and also containing properties such as anti-aging and anti-cancer. So here we have the problem statement for the study which include the lack of knowledge regarding the benefits of EBN because EBN is not common in other communities other than the Chinese population. Other than that, EBN does not have a flavorful taste and also has a smell of egg white to it. The presence of nitrite, nitrate and mites have been an issue in the swiftlets industry. Excessive consumption may lead to serious health issues in the human body. Next, EBN-based products that we see in the market today are usually in a ready-to-drink products or cosmetic products such as in the form of serum or sheet mask. And lastly, EBN that we usually see in the market today are usually adulterated such as by using the bleaching technique. The objectives for these studies are to develop gummies incorporated with Swiftless Edible Bird's Nest. Second, to conduct proximate analysis and physical chemical tests of the developed gummies incorporated with Swiftless Edible Bird's Nest. And last but not least, to conduct sensory evaluation of the developed gummies incorporated with Swiftless Edible Bird's Nest among University of Malaysia Kelantan communities. So here we have the hypothesis which are null hypothesis is the developed gummy incorporated with EBN having unacceptable nutritional and physical chemical properties and undesirable towards the panelist. For the alternative hypothesis, the developed gummy incorporated with EBN having good nutritional and physical chemical properties and are accepted by the panelist. Colochilia species are the species used in the production of EBN for human consumption. And the species that was used in the study is called Aerodamus fusifagus, which is the white nest swiftlets. Common examples of EBN adulterants are trimelo fungus, pork skin, and also egg whites. The cleaning process of EBN is a crucial step in the EBN production. This is because from here, adulteration of the EBN may occur. High salic acid contribute to the high percentage of protein found in EBN, which is above 50%. Gummy are a broad category of gelatin-based chewable sweets, usually made with high content of sugar and corn syrup. The use of healthier ingredients such as natural juices and replacing sugar with other sweetening products such as honey can produce a healthier version of gummy. The issues regarding halal status of gelatin is not new among Muslims. This is because the source of the gelatin may come from a non-halal source. However, in the present day, certified halal gelatin is already produced in the market today where the gelatin uses cattle bones of animals slaughtered by Muslims. In producing this gummy, there were a few trial and errors regarding the formulation. However, in this study, only one formulation was used based on the table given and it can produce 18 grams of gummies incorporated with EBN. And here we have the step-by-step -step in the process of developing gummies incorporated with EBN. The preparation of EBN was done prior to formulating the gummy. This is because the cleaning process took several hours to clean out the dirt, sands, and also plucking out the feathers. Moving on to result and discussion. Here we have the pH value for gummy incorporated with EBN and also commercial gummy. It was found that the gummy incorporated with EBN was more acidic compared to commercial gummy. The ingredients used in the gummy incorporated with EBN contribute to the pH value. The use of lemon and citric acid influence the acidity of the gummy incorporated with EBN. Based on the result, gummy incorporated with EBN has a range of a pH value of 3. Meanwhile, 
commercial gummy has a range of pH of 4 to 5. In the color analysis for the gummies, chromometer was used to indicate the parameters of the gummies. L for lightness, A for redness, and B value for yellowness. Based on the result, the L value of gummy incorporated with EBN decreases gradually from day 1 until day 21. The lower the L value, the darker the color of the gummy. This was because the color changes may be due to the use of honey because at high temperature, non-enzymatic browning reaction may occur, for example, myelin reaction or caramelization. Moving on to moisture content. Based on the result, gummy incorporated with EBN have a high moisture content compared to commercial gummy. However, from day 1 to day 21, both gummies decreased in terms of moisture content. Based on previous studies, high moisture confessions are most likely to lose moisture and harden during storage. Meanwhile, low moisture confections are most likely to absorb moisture, which causes the sample to be sticky. But in this case, the commercial gummy, which has a low moisture content, also decreases in terms of its moisture content after day 21. Based on visual appearance, the commercial gummy end up sweating because according to previous studies, pectin jellies, which the commercial gummy is made of, may sweat if the pectin has not been completely solubilized. Furthermore, gummy and jelly candies may end up sticky if they, are, if they are kept unprotected in very humid conditions. Moving on to the texture profile analysis. Based on the table, the texture of gummy incorporated with EBN and commercial gummy were recorded for day 1, day 7, day 14, and day 21. In terms of hardness, the gummy incorporated with EBN decreases, meanwhile the commercial gummy increases. In terms of cohesiveness, there were no significant changes for both gummies from day 1 to day 21. This shows the internal networks in the gummies remain relatively static. Springiness in gummy incorporated with EBN changed drastically from day 7 to day 14. Meanwhile, there were no significant changes for the commercial gummy. Springiness, which is the property of resisting deformation, relates with the use of gelatin in the formulation because gelatin provides elasticity. For gumminess in both gummies, the value was in accordance with the hardness because gumminess is the product of hardness multiplied by cohesiveness. So the gummy incorporated with EBN decreases from day 1 to day 21 and commercial gummy increases. In terms of chewiness, the gummy incorporated with EBN increases in value. Meanwhile, commercial gummy did not show stable changes. For the nitrite, nitrate, and mites content, 50 gram sample was sent to Biosynergy Laboratory Sundiam Berhad. The result as shown in the table above. The result obtained from the gummy incorporated with EBN was not detected below the detection limit 5 mg per kilogram and there were no mites detected as well. Proximate analysis was done to see the content of carbohydrate, protein, fat, moisture, and also ash. Based on the result, the high protein content from the gummy incorporated with EBN is a result from the protein content from EBN, which is above 50%, and it is known as its highest composition. Gelatin also contributed to the high percentage of protein because it is a high quality source of protein and also enriched the protein content in food products. Meanwhile, for the commercial gummy, the protein and fat content was relatively low. Sensory evaluation was carried out for 30 panelists among the UMK communities. The respondents were from students and staffs. They were evaluated based on appearance, color, aroma, texture, sourness, and also sweetness. The result was interpreted with convex alpha. The acceptable value for alpha coefficient were suggested to be larger than 0 0.70. However, alpha coefficient equal to 0 0.60 or larger are considered acceptable for panelists that are unfamiliar with the scale. The value recorded was found to be 0 0.65. To conclude for this whole study, many improvements can be made in the production of gummy incorporated with EBN. 
it was found to exhibit good nutritional properties where the protein content is high, contributed from the gelatin and EBN. Moisture content for the gummy was relatively high, but the texture in terms of hardness and gumminess decreased after day 21. The sourness from the lemon and citric acid gives the sour taste to the gummy and also the pH, which is in the range of 3. Sensory evaluation was done to see how the panelists accept the gummy in terms of appearance, color, aroma, texture, sweetness, and sourness. Overall, the panelists suggested mainly regarding the texture to make it chewier. That is all for me. Thank you for watching.